Down the Shed! Hi and welcome to Down the Shed with me Jason. So in this episode we shall be looking at the Velleman MK137 Infrared Remote Checker. packaging so I've decided to do a Velleman kit I've got a few knocking around and I need to cheer myself up after recent disasters so again with the Velleman kit you get a decent build guide the only difference with this one being that in the picture you can see there's a blue capacitor at the bottom there and in the actual kit it's a brown one but it's supposed to be a 470 NF and it's coming out at 462 on my component checker. So that's good enough. So let's start populating the board. So R1 is a 2K2 or red, red, red. And that slots in just here. R2 is a 220K or a red, red, yellow. That goes in here. R3 and R4 are 1Ms, brown, black, green. So R3 goes in here. And R4 is here. R5 is a 1K, brown, black, red. Goes in there. R678, R470 is yellow, purple, brown. So R6 is down here. R7 is here. Pick this other one up. R8 is here, so that's yellow, purple, brown, 470s, and R9 is red, red, brown for a 220, which is down here. So we'll do the normal blue tack and get them soldered. So we'll just get a couple of these soldered in, so bring the soldered iron in, heat the pad and the board. Bit of solder, let it flow, move the solder, remove the heat, a bit more solder, let it flow, clean iron. So I'm going to solder a few and then snip a few because it just makes life a little bit easier when the pads are all getting in your way, or the leads are getting in your way rather. Right, so that's all the resistors populated. Next, it wants us to do the capacitor. So that's down at the bottom of the board. So I don't see why not really. You may as well pop that in. So this is a 470 NF. Or a one, ooh, nearly dropped it. Bit of that. Or a 474. Right, so that's the capping. This has been given, I don't know why, a difficulty rating of two. There's not really anything difficult about this project. So I think we're going to go. Uh, it wants us to do LEDs next, so why not? I was going to pretty much going to say I'm going to go off piece and just do what I want to now, but it's pretty much what I was going to do. So it gave us five five mil red LEDs. But I've only got four because I've already decided to mix it up. I'm going to put a green one in the middle. So again, polarity, long leg positive, short leg negative. The short leg has got the white band and also a flat edge, which the LED should have. So pop those in. Sometimes it's worth checking them just to make sure the polarity is right on the LED itself. They do come out of the factory wrong sometimes. Come back to that one because it's inside the board there. Actually, if I squeeze it over, will it go in? Yeah, just about. Even hold it. So, that one in. 
what I'll do is I'll solder these four in and then I'll do the middle one. Right, I've only soldered one leg of each LED in because this one is a good reason to show it's slightly not in so we'll just give that a bit of a tickle and that's good enough that's good enough that's good enough they're all good enough so we'll just solder the rest of those down when i say that's good enough i don't mean the british car industry good enough i mean it is good enough or the lack of the British car industry because everything was just good enough. What killed the British car industry? The British attitude. And in my book, there's a lot of difference between good enough and that'll do, which is what killed. Ah, that'll do. Yeah. Now we've got no car industry. In fact, I don't think there is a British mark left that's actually British, though, is there? Jag Land Rover own somebody else, flipping Vauxhalls owned by the Japs, Rolls Royce Mini owned by the Germans. It's all gone to pot. So that's the LUDs in. So we've got a nice little green in the middle, red on the outer pattern. Right, well I thought this was an infrared transmitter, but it's actually been called a phototransistor, which as you can see is actually showing as a resistor, 31 PF. And it is a L5393C. So again, you've got to watch the polarity on these, long leg, short leg. Wipe out. So this is actually going to have to wait because it goes in here and we're not going to get that we might actually get that on the board happy days i've gone to sleep Getting quite handy at soldering up against these. That's one leg. Two legs. Remembering, double check, and we've got the short leg on the wrong right side, not the wrong side. So that's the photoresistor or the infrared transmitter in. So I think now we're just going to wing it. Got T1, T2, T3. Let's check those first. Transistors T1, T2 are BC557. T3 is a BC547. So it's a good job we looked. So, da 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 da. Let's get that around a bit for you. It makes it a bit easier to see. Push that across. So, which one have we picked up first? We have a 557. I've already forgotten what he said. So, 557 is 1 and 2. So, and we've got them in the tripod standard. I don't like to call it. So T1 is up here. Again, polarity, base collector and emitter. Two of these legs you can get wrong. The middle one's always going to be right. But you've got a round edge and a flat edge, and the board silk screen will match that. So just get the shape, matching the shape, and you can't go wrong. The 557 has been clearly marked as different with a white label on it, which was nice. I shall show you that. So there's one of the 547s. And... Oh, it must have had a bit of grey or something on it because that definitely was different then anyway 557 is a T3 sorry 547 is T3 so this 557 is going to be T1 because we've already got T2 oh no T1's in right let's start again 
so 557 we've done t2 so this will 557 we've done a t1 so this will be t2 which goes in here and again I've said it a minute ago you get the shape matching the shape and you can't go wrong otherwise you won't have a really bad day what's going on here So that leaves T3 as a 5-4-7. If this is wrong, we know we've done one wrong. No, that's a 5-4-7. So T3 is here. And once again, match the shape to the board. And you can't go wrong. Solder that lot in, do one leg at a time, check them, clean the iron. Always keep your iron clean. Who's who? Right, so that'll be you. And that'll be you. Now, good enough. Let's get the other six legs done. Soldering is easy once you get the technique. If you're having trouble, it's either the heat or your iron ain't clean, your temperature's not right, your temperature's too high, too low, probably too low in most instances. So that's those. I'll just give that one a bit of a reflow. There we go. Happy days. Okay, folks, time for the switch, and we're nearly done. So let's get the switch in there. It can only go in one way. It's pretty idiot proof by the look of it. Now, I would suggest getting plenty, I've lost me, plenty of solder on these terminals. And I really mean don't be shy because this is going to be constantly flicked on and off and it's going to put a strain on it. So you want to get as much solder anchoring that down as you can which is why they're giving us pretty big pads really so there we go three nice big blodules of solder that'll hold that switch in place quite nicely again remembering if you get blue tack on your board just dab it with another piece of blue tack and it will come off so that's pretty much the kit build done all we've got to do now is power it up. We've got a 9 volt connector here. So black goes in that side. Actually, it might cheat. That bolts onto there like that. But instead of having the wires coming over and down, I might just actually solder them on underneath. So while I mess around with that, Good enough for a test anyway. So I'm guessing they're screws anyway. Most of these Veneman kits are black screws, so bear with. Then by the magic of the spares tub, we have two self-tapping Veneman screws. I doubt they're Veneman, they just bought them in, but as supplied by. So we'll just screw this in. Find the other one. Not screw that down. Screw that down. And there we have it. Our MK137 infrared remote checker. So this will check any infrared remote. If it be a car remote and 
If you think, oh, car remotes aren't infrared, Renault used to use car remotes that were infrared. The old uh, Clio's and the first bloody Espaces were all infrared. You literally, if you couldn't unlock your car, you had to aim your key at the rear view mirror to get it to work. So I do know what I'm talking about. So anyway, let's get a battery in this and test this quickly. Need to, need to get some new 12 volt batteries. So switch it on. Ooh. We get a green light. I wasn't expecting that single one to come on. So let's get a remote control. So. We've got no flashing light on that. Well, after removing some leaky batteries, we now have a red light on our remote. So what we shall do is stand this up in shot. This should be at least five centimeters away. And even though it's aiming, it's not doing that. There we go. So it says at least five centimeters away, but it could be just due to, oh, hang on, you're out of shot. It could be just due to the batteries in the remote, but. Can you see I'm flashing? There we go. So the inner one stays on all the time and the outer one's flash, which is handy because I just happened to change that inner one to green. So that's the MK137 Velleman Infrared Remote Checker. Excellent kit. Please like the video. It helps with all the algorithms, apparently. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. We have it. I think the five centimeters on there is actually saying it's got to be within five centimeters. If I turn this around that way, you'll get a better view. So the aim's got to be pretty cock on as well. But yeah, so the green one in the middle, I didn't realize it was going to be a power light. I just thought they'd all flash. So by changing that red one to a green was a risky, but good move. Cause I like it. It does work. Uh, the remote's got to be close. I'd expect it to, uh, sort of register from further away but it does the job it's intended to do it's a handy bit of kit so next time a remote doesn't work be able to test it and that's going on the shelf of success